Hello everyone, 16th episode of my Modular Diagonale mock project series, the series where I'm transforming the 2020 LEGO Diagonale set into a modular format, not only creating the back of the buildings, but also ensuring that we can split the buildings for each floor to have access to the interior, just like a regular modular. So in this episode, I'm showing you the last of the four buildings of the Diagonale, the Weasley's Wizard Wheezy's shop and also the entrance to the Nocturne Alley. And in this one, I can show you already that I added a new building. So instead of having the back of the Weasley's Wizard Wheezy's shop, I have another shop, a shop inside the Nocturne Alley. Actually, the only shop that appears in the movies in the Nocturne Alley, which is Borgin and Burke. But more on that later. For now, let's focus on the front facade of the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, which I tried to keep as much as possible as the original design. It was by far the most challenging one to split by floors and to keep it as much as possible as the original. These round windows and the way that they are fit together was really hard to change in a way that it was splittable. I had to make some concessions and I had to change some parts that were used and it was by far the hardest part of the whole diagonally for me to build because it was a bit unstable during the build process. It then becomes stable in the end and I'm completely happy on how stable and sturdy the whole model is. So that's what I did. Uh, I also was able to keep this cool functionality. So that is the front. And now, well, it's, this is not really the back. It's kind of the sideways where we have the front of, well, we have the entrance to the Nocturne Alley and we have the front of Borgin and Burke. I tried to create a building very dark and not only dark in the colors, but dark in the mood. You can see it in the movies that is a kind of more old building in very dark tones with very little light and that was the kind of atmosphere that I was going for when creating this building. Created it based on some images and also some scenes from the movies where Borgin and Burke appears. I also tried to put a bit of creativity on the things that are not shown. For instance, I added here two crows in the rooftop as decoration. These crows are designed based on the Creator 3-in-1 Viking ship model from 2022. I think that's it from the outside. One thing that I also want to highlight is that, as usual, you can uh, attach the other buildings here. This is where the other uh, buildings from the diagonal will fit in. But since I have uh, two other sides that are uh, full walls, I also added the pins. So in fact, not only on the Nocturne Alley entrance side, but also in uh, the side of Borgin and Burks, and in the back of Borgin and Burks, and on the side of the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, you have technical pieces with hole where you can fit in the technical axis and attach other buildings. So in fact, you can attach three different buildings to this uh, building of the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes and the Borgin and Burke. So you can, from here, extend your diagonale to whatever you want. This is the outside. Let's look at the inside. Just like in the Flourish and Blots building, only the ground floor is common for the two stores. So let's start by removing all the upper floors and start talking about and showing you the ground floor. As you can see on the entrance of the Nocturne Alley, I actually didn't create any split and I just left it like that, all attached to the ground floor and the stores are splittable in separate but without this upper part here. Well, starting with the Weasley's Wizard Wizzes, 
You can see that I kept it basically the same as the original design from the Lego set. The only difference is that this fountain of love potions, this little build here, was outside of the store, it didn't have space, because this store here is a bit larger, not much, but a bit larger than the original, I believe like two studs. I was able to find a place to put it here. I believe it matches the place where it is in the movies. That's the only difference basically here on the ground floor of the Weasley's Wizard Wizzes. Let me, well, let me put now and talk all about the Weasley store first, and then we go into the Borgin and Burke store. So you can see that the first floor of the Weasley store is also basically the same. You can see some differences here in the shelves that are on the back of the big puppet facing the outside because of the small changes that I had to do on the puppet body to make sure that this was all aligned and aligned with the split between the two floors. I was forced to make some changes, so I added a few flasks. The shelves are in a different uh, height, but other than that, you have exactly the same things that you have on the original Lego set. Uh, also, I think I increased the height of this box so that it would create an additional support for the second floor of the Weasley store. And going into the last floor, and because of here of the hat, I need to be careful putting it I need to move the head to put it on top of the, the piece that makes it go up and down. It's working. And to see the last floor, we need to remove the roof. And as in the other floors, there's no difference here. I kept the same things. This store was already pretty full. There was no space to add much more things here. I didn't felt the need to do it. In the other stores, I increased the size of the store, so there was much more space and it made sense to add new stuff. I believe that the Weasley store already had a lot of space in the original Lego set. With three floors, the store already had a lot of space, a lot of stuff showing. So I decided to create the other store, Borgin and Burke, instead of increasing a lot the size of the Weasley store. So I kept it as it is. I just changed the roof. As it was, it was not a roof equal from both sides. It only had one of these layers on one side and then it was flat until the end of the building because of course it was open in the back. By not increasing the size of the building a lot, but having to create this roof that is equal on both sides, I had a bit of a challenge, but I think it looks good. It can be removed easily, but it, it took me a bit of work to redesign also this roof and the upper side of this building, either on the front, but also here in the back. So basically that's it for the Weasley store. Let's take a look at Borgin and Burke. And to help with that, let me remove again the upper floors from the Weasley store so that it's easier to see Borgin and Burke. And in the ground floor of Borgin and Burke, this store was created from scratch. You can see that it has a skeleton facing the street. You can see several things that are very visible on the few scenes from Borgen and Burke that you see in the movies. For instance, I placed here a, a fireplace where Harry Potter ends up the first time that he tries to use the flu powder. And on the mantle of that fireplace, I put a skull some small pieces that represent the shrunken skulls and a flask with a liquid. There are also some scenes where you see him looking at some glass cabinets in a dark structure. 
So I created that with several things inside. Skulls, statuettes, all kinds of weird artifacts that can be used for dark magic. I put one in the middle, one in the counter wall to the fireplace. And if you see some deleted scenes, I believe this only appears in the deleted scenes of the movie, you see a sarcophagus where Harry hides when the Malfoys come into the store. So I created this sarcophagus here and I put the counter where we see the Malfoys talking with the store owner. Also I added another glass cabinet in the same style here in the corner just to fill a bit more the store. And then we have the stairs for the first floor. Let me show you the first floor of the store. Okay, and on the first floor we have another fireplace. I put this one with a real flame. You can see a weird color here. <laughs> In this last building I started to miss some pieces, especially in the red colors. It's not that I did the math wrong when ordering the pieces, it's because I did small tweaks to improve the buildings as I was building them. And in this last one, some pieces started missing. And I have to, for now, use the wrong color here and there that you will see. I will now need to order these pieces in the right colors to replace them later. You can see that here in the fireplace, also in the ground floor of the Weasley store, a tile that is black and should be reddish brown. So there are a few things here and there. So besides the fireplace, I have another cabinet. I have a desk and a chair for the store owner. I have a window to the back. I know that I put connections to add another building here, but since the Weasley store already had, and even in the original design, some windows on the first floor for this side, I decided to also put windows on the first floor of Borgen and Burke for this side. So any building that you attach on this side of this store can't have a full first floor. You need to have a bit of space so these windows are not blocked by a wall. And finally, I wanted to put here the magic cabinet that allowed the Dark Wizards to invade Hogwarts. And this cabinet, you can see that it opens. I based it on the few images that appear in the movies. Well, for sure it's not perfect, but I like how it turned out. Also related with that same scene, I put here in the roof of this side building some details that relate with the scene where Harry, Ron and Hermione are on the top of the roof looking into the Malfoys in the Nocturne Alley going into this same cabinet. It's a scene from the movie that I wanted to allow people to do in this model. So that's it for Borgen and Burke. You can see here the rooftop. with the crows and two chimneys. The chimneys are kind of on top of the fireplaces. I wanted to keep them aligned. Remember you have one on the ground floor and another one on the first floor. So basically that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this model of the Weasley's Wizard Wizards shop and Borgin and Burke. This finishes my modular diagonale mock in terms of buildings. I'm preparing another episode that will be the final one showing the four buildings and adding minifigures to this model. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see that video, just like this video, subscribe and press the bell to receive the notifications. Until then, stay safe and keep building.